Yo, welcome in, fellas. So today I'm coming at you with my three favorite builds in Diablo 2 Resurrected. These are incredibly effective. They are great for magic finding, my favorite thing to do. And they're just incredibly kind of easy to play. So if you want to see more of these type of Diablo 2 Resurrected videos, hit the like button right below this video and subscribe up. So hey, now let's get after it. No surprise, a sorceress made the list right here. And as we jump into this skill tree, I'm going to show you exactly what this is. It is a Nova Sorceress. Yeah, Nova is absolutely amazing. You can kind of get um, pretty budget, get some really darn good gear. And uh, it's gotten crazy survivability, crazy kill speed when you get uh, the insane endgame stuff. This isn't a full build guide, but yeah, you just max Nova, max static, max lightning mastery. That's all your damage pretty much capped out. And for crazy survivability, you essentially max energy shield and telekinesis. Everything else is just kind of one points to get to it. Warmth and Rosen Armor. Absolutely amazing. And for the stats, it's not like most builds. I put nothing into Vitality. It's not one of those builds. You actually max energy and just enough strength and dex to wear whatever gear you want to wear. The maximum energy is because we're rocking that energy shield I talked about a second ago. And you notice right here, resistance is not that important. Really, poison is the most important. But if you do all the gear, like I'm about to show you super quick here, you really won't have any problem with that either. So yeah, taking a look at that gear, max damage, we got infinity. You can use that Crescent Moon here too. You could always budget, go with a Shaco or something else, but Griffin's Eye is going to be the best. We got a good Caster Amulet with Lightning and, and some uh, resistances there. Skin of the Viper Magi, actually important for the FCR and the uh, magic damage reduced on there also. With the Topaz to get even more magic, find to love it. And actually, Frost Burns are actually best in slot here for that increased mana. Absolutely crazy that a budget option like this is actually best in slot, but it's awesome. We've got a couple FCR rings. We've got Arrakis Mesh and War Travelers for some more magic find. Obviously, CTA and Spirit on the offhand to get that survivability up and get yourself even more of this mana down here. Thunder Charm, Torch, and Annie. Obviously, you're going to get those if you can, and as many Lightning Skillers as you can, along with that Geeds. I go with Magic Find because I love magic finding, so slam those in there as well. And actually, super important to this build is... This gear right here on your mercenary getting a prayer mercenary act to prayer mercenary and then all this gear is actually budget we've got treachery we've got insight and we've got cure and the way this all works together it makes your life regenerate super fast your mana regenerate super fast and the poison will go away super fast as well so we're gonna go hit just a couple of quick spots with this just to show you how crazy this can be we're gonna go to a classic here uh eldritch and shank we're gonna go ahead and slam eldritch real quick just super, super quick, just to show you. Watch, watch how fast these guys melt down. Stomp them, flash, they're done. They're gone like that. So let's go ahead and bump it up to player's eight difficulty. This is as hard as it gets. Let's go ahead and, and we hit Eldritch. Let's go ahead and hit Shank now. That, I didn't even use static on that group, and I'm not even using static on this group either. That was without even using one of my skills. So let's go ahead and hop to the Chaos Sanctuary, an absolute classic here. I'm going to show you. I would absolutely even slaps down right there an absolutely classic spot for people to magic find so as we go ahead and get out here in the cast sanctuary i will actually go ahead and use static and then flash them boom that group's down head up to the next group flash them and because we got infinity on our actual uh, main hand not on our mercenary we get the minus lightning res and we get the conviction aura that will break these guys lightning immunity so you can take them out as well you can see even though uh, these guys are immune to lightning and this is player's eight, the kill speed is kind of nasty and kind of crazy even like this. So we're not going to do a whole run. Let's go ahead and jump into the next of my favorite builds in Diablo 2 Resurrected. So next up, we see we got one of the beast boys right here. It's a barbarian and more specifically on the barbarian here. My favorite is actually the singer barb. So pretty much you want to max out war cry and the, uh, several of the synergies for it, so we go straight up the line with Battle Cry and Taunt. I uh, haven't quite maxed out the rest that I do goes into Howl, because Howl you actually do use as well. But what is actually crazy OP on this build is actually Find Item. So 70% of the time when you kill a Champion Elite, you do this on it and you'll get an item. You can do it on every single monster, but generally I target the Champions and Elites. And then you just put one point Wonders over here on this uh, Combat Mastery page and nothing on the Combat Skills you're war crying everything you howl away anything you really don't want to kill or you don't even have to use howl you can just war cry everything right down so over for the stats i mean you just do just enough strength and dex to wear your gear it's actually what i do is kind of do a 60 40 split here 
uh, maybe a little bit less, more like a 70-30, but vitality and energy because it actually sucks down mana like crazy. And survivability for what you use it for is generally not too bad. Over for the gear, we got dual uh, Hotos here, Heart of the Oaks for the skills and the cast rate. So you actually teleport around. That's why you got to have Enigma on right here. Chaco for all the good stuff. Everybody knows about that one. A, a Barbarian Caster Amulet. As long as it's 5 FCR or higher, you're going to be okay with this setup. We got Chance Guards from our Magic Bind. We got Nagels from our Magic Bind. We've got Arachnid's Mesh. That 20 FCR makes it so 40, 40. There's 20 more for 100 and then 5 or more. And you got 105 over the breakpoint. And we got some more Travs over here. Now, down in the Charms, we stacked up Magic Find, Magic Find, Magic Find. Um, War Cry Skillers will get you more damage. I only got a few of them. Obviously, when I go Torch and Annie, Geeds from our Magic Find, this is completely optional, getting a Sunder Charm on this particular build. It depends where you plan on going with it. I threw it on there just because I was actually hitting Terror Zones with this build, and every once in a while, there'd be something around you need it for. As for the Mercenary, we just got the Fortitude, we've got the Insight, and we've got an Andario's Visage, a budget setup. You'll be perfectly fine. Really, the Insight is the important thing. And I will note, on the offhand, I wasn't really using anything. I actually had this as a throw bar before I respect it. So... I'm just using just what I got on the main hand right here. Now, where would you generally want to go use a build like this? It's not the most crazy powerful. Barbarian is known as good for Trav. Um, this one is just so-so at Trav because of the way I have it set up. So we'll go out here and just show you. This is just player's one difficulty, but if you're running solo online, you're going to be uh, hitting this stuff out here, just player's one anyways. So I'm just keeping a track on my health and my energy and stuff like that. It takes a ton of shouts to get these guys down. So it's not uh, necessarily the best, but it ain't bad out here. It ain't bad at all. Now we can teleport in here, find item on these guys, and we've got nothing on the run. But that really, not a terrible run at all for hit and trap. But where I really love using this particular one is hammering the pits. The pits is one of the best magic find locations. I love doing holy grails, and that's why I love this character so much. When you're hopping down in the pits, uh, depending on how you want to do it, uh, I'll do it both ways. You can haul away all the monsters and just get the champion. And right there, my mercenary killed the champion before I even had a chance. Um, you can go ahead and do it this way. Or, if you want to, you can go ahead and because this is an area of effect, there's a gold wrap. Nice. You can just go ahead and war cry literally everything and not worry about shouting everything away. That'll actually increase the odds of you getting runes. You don't have to target everything, which is one of the reasons I love this build. It's got that area of effect, much like Nova. And also... The find item. You're just going to pull out. There goes a unique flying out of there. We've already got a couple of uniques just on this one run because there's so much magic find. I guess I didn't really shout out Dimensional Blade. Uh, exactly how much magic find do we have stacked up on this particular guy? Nearly 500. And we are at that 105 break point. So you can really fly around the pits. You can get a ton of pit runs done fast. And hopefully, you're hoping, get those GG godly uniques here. Uh, maybe right on the video, we're going to get uh, Tyro's Might. Fellas, fellas not looking like it but here is my second uh, favorite build in Diablo 2 these are in no particular order but let's hop to the third one and that build is the necromancer now which one do you think I'm going with let's look at the skill tree and we'll find out it kind of gives it away right here and then when you look at these other ones yeah you can see it's a summoning necromancer not the poison not the bone I actually love and prefer the summonings the summons are, are almost kind of invincible for the most part and they uh, are a huge distraction, a huge amount of safety, so you can really just kind of sit back, relax, and nuke the entire room. So we got uh, maxing out Skeleton Mastery and Skeleton. Come down over here. We actually are maxing Golem Mastery, but you see him walking around here. We're using Iron Golem, but I only have one base point into it. Actually, you get way more life from doing Golem Mastery, and really, I just want that Golem to mainly not die right there. Obviously, you want to have Summon Resistance. Just one into that, getting that all the way up to level 19 with the plus... To skills gear you have on there you've seen over here we have a corpse explosion maxed out to get the maximum radius to absolutely nuke an entire screen one into bone armor that's an excellent one point wonder and we actually went ahead and put a ton of like our remaining points into amp damage that way i don't have to spam all over the entire map to hit a ton of the uh, different groups of monsters you can just hit a couple of them the entire screen's covered and you can start just blasting away at those dead bodies so right here on the resistances you see they're okay but they don't necessarily have to be perfect. You do want them up there, and they're close. But the uh, summons really block a ton of that. It's just like normal. Just enough strength dex to where you wear your gear with uh, max everything into vitality right there. And when you take a look at the gear, 
it's pretty standard like caster type of gear and this actually works with incredibly budget gear just incredibly you can have a completely naked character and have this uh set up with these skill points and you theoretically and you could i've done it before walked into players eight difficulty cast sanctuary and clear it out with a naked character so but uh for pretty darn good gear here pretty much almost best in slot on all these spots we've got the heart of the oak we've got the shako we've got the spirit we've got a summoning uh fcr got strength and uh, all res on that amulet pretty decent rare one right there uh, enigma obviously you need to teleport all the other good stuff there trang's gloves are going to be an obvious one for any necromancer decided to throw some old alders boots over here to get your life up get the walk run since you're going to be uh you know you're running crazy fast with those two on there but really getting the fire res up since it was incredibly low without having those on there we've got one fcr ring and we've got one stone of jordan and i decided just to throw on a gold wrap because we didn't really need any more fcr for this build I just got some random skillers here, to be perfectly honest. I don't really have a ton of summoning ones, so I decided to throw in another poison and bone with decks, I suppose, just to help out ever so slightly. And I didn't even max out the charms. Usually I'd fill these with uh, magic fine charms. I didn't get around to grabbing them. Obviously, Torch and Annie, and um, it's not required, but you could go ahead and throw on either a fire or physical sunder charm. Corpus Explosion is half physical, half fire. So that's going to explain why over on my mercenary here, I have infinity. It will increase the damage of the half of corpse explosion that is fire it doesn't uh it helps out a little bit with the physical too i believe if i remember correctly but mainly it's for that half we've got a treachery and a talus mask just a budget option fortitude and the uh andaros visage obviously the go-to in slot there we've got the might mercenary helping out the mercenaries damage and helping out your um uh summons excuse me had a little uh meltdown right there and you notice we don't have an insight to keep our uh, mana up. Well, actually, we do. It's just hiding. This little guy right here, my Iron Golem, is made out of an insight. And in D2R nowadays, uh, they changed it up so that then he will stick with you forever until he dies. That's why we wanted to put into the Golem Mastery to get his life up to make sure that he survives for essentially ever. Now, right now, we're going to make sure. We're just testing uh, players one right now and just show you uh, if you were solo online, what type of stuff you would expect to be able to do. Hit your uh, call to arms. Obviously, we want to get our bone on. And then, boom, go ahead and amp damage. You wait for one to go down. And there's a corpse explosion. And it just kind of melts everything. We'll go ahead and hit it up to players 8. Now, players 8, it might be a little bit slower. But we'll go ahead and see. Oh, I didn't mean bring up any of the skeletons yet. Uh, let me go ahead and grab a bunch of these skellies. I just bring up the normal skeletons. They're kind of uh, just to block all the damage from going to your mercenary and your golem, to be perfectly honest. So, boom, there we go. Down goes a monster, and we start hitting the corpse explosion. On players 8, it's going to be a little bit slower because you need a couple more bodies to start hitting everything. But there's players 8. Down goes Shank. And why don't we, hey, go ahead and hit uh, uh, one of the go-to spots. You can actually run. Uh, either players 1 is crazy fast, or you can actually hit the pits on players eight difficulty doing that holy grail hunting and uh, hopefully i mean higher players count getting runes you can even hit stuff on the way like right here i mean monsters are monsters right all these guys could drop you a high rune if you got lucky there's a rare amulet i'm not going to check it for the purposes of this video but you can clear out tons of monsters super super easy now here's a little pack uh usually i'd like the packs bigger uh more monsters to go ahead and take out but is what it is you see how everything gets amped and you can go ahead, boom, 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 hit those. That champion took a little bit longer because the packs were so small. Actually, the larger the packs, the faster everything goes. See that one? You can see it. It takes up the entire, literally, the entire map with one hit. If you want to just go ahead and get one monster, see how you just instantly tele stomp them. And boom, down they go. But yeah, you can easy peasy clear out even players eight uh, in this game with no problem at all. So that's why this is one of my top three favorite builds to play in all of Diablo 2 Resurrected.